my company is a proper solution provider, you know. So being a solution provider, I should always be up to date with everything I have. I cannot, one day I, I wouldn't be surprised I'm seeing a big uh, Russell's poster studio or something. Apart from a company, I'm known for building brands. Good afternoon, everyone. We are back with a very special episode on Tech Talk 360, where we unveil one byte at a time. Today, uh, I'm so honored and proud to host one of our very special and one, the first international guest to feature on this podcast. It's none other than Praveena K. She is the founder and CEO at Virtual Assistant Asia and also a LinkedIn top voice and a keynote speaker who is also a certified trainer and also a coach. Hi Praveena, how are you doing today? Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Amazing. Very, very excited to have a chat uh, on you your platform and everything else. Let's just jump into my signature first question. Who is Praveena K? Praveena K is a Malaysian. Just to introduce myself, I'm a Malaysian and I'm running a virtual assistant company. And I'm quite, I think so, I'm well known in LinkedIn. That's why you found me out as top voice and everything. And apart from that, I'm also a coach, trainer, as you mentioned, my titles and everything. I'm doing that. Apart from that, in a way, I would say Pravina K here to inspire people and to be inspired by everybody. So that's Pravina K. Both of us have quite a similar goal, isn't it? To yeah, inspire people. Inspiring, being inspiration is very important. I always believe in that and it has to go both ways. It, it can never be one way. Inspiring has to be both ways. We have to be inspired somehow. Uh, wherever we are, the little things inspire us. And sometimes people inspire us regardless of age. I believe in that. I don't think so only 60 years old or 40 years old people should inspire us when we are in 20s or something. I think even people same age with us or younger than us can inspire us. And same thing, we can be an inspiration to many people as well. Definitely, definitely. Uh, let's just jump to my uh, favorite part is that the founder and CEO of Virtual Assistant Asia. So what actually inspired you for the creation of this and in this world of entrepreneurship and uh, how has been how has your experience been so far into this business approach and this brand? Honestly, I would say that like any brown girl from a you know Hindu families or something, I feel like I want to break the uh, generational curse. Because when we are from a typical, uh, very, how to say, family, I mean, I'm from a typical Indian family. So I guess a diplomatical kind of question when it comes to career, because they already preset when a girl born or a boy born, it has to be engineer, teacher, doctors, uh, something like that, right? So I wanted to be something not to belong into that particular realm. So I, I, I chose entrepreneurship. Amazing. So uh, we'll just uh, you just explain how the approach was. So let's just give the listeners a brief overview of the company of uh, of actually what the goal is and where this actually started. A virtual assistant Asia has been started ever since twenty twenty one. I started as a one person first as an entrepreneur or solopreneur to be precise. And then now we expanded into a couple of like, I would, I would say eight to 11 staff right now because some of them are part-time with me. So but if I control the whole team, I have 11 staff, eight permanent staff right now. So in a growth of three years of growth, I'm having that. And the journey was typically, I was a virtual assistant first. I was working as one for another company, which is in abroad, which is US, uh, multiple company, actually US, uh, Europe sites, and also Australia. So while working, I discovered that why this is not in Asia, very, very well-known way, because when I say virtual assistant, many people doesn't have a understanding what is that first. So uh, that's something questionable, because when I first joined as well, I didn't know what is virtual assistant as well. So that's why I discovered, and then I tried to do more surveys and understand whether is it in my country. And then I found out it's not there as well. So when I commonly ask anybody around me, what is virtual assistant, their first answer would be, is it more like personal assistant? Or is it because the direct thing, like almost close to personal assistant or admin related? 
So that that's that's what makes me feel like okay, we have to do something. They have to come up with something, and that's how everything started. I also just uh, went through the virtual assistant website uh, before our podcast quite a couple of days, and it's it's really impress uh, impressive it, to see it's something very very known in uh, Europe or US. Even in US, there are companies more than a decade, there. and there are some associations like virtual assistant associations there. Where if anybody wants to be a virtual assistant, they have to be certified by the particular bodies. So that is something. Mm-hmm. Even though we are miles away from there, I feel like it's a very, uh, uh, how to say, unknown tool. I would say, like you know, if we don't yeah. know what is this, nobody told about it, or nobody. I would say we don't have the curiosity because if you say something to them, they'll be like, oh, this has been existing in our country for a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. That's how it's happening. So, uh, Pravina. I think you are an inspirational leader within the company. You have you are leading a quite a big number of team, as I hope so. Is it a quite large number of staff you are handling? I think so. Am I right? Like I mentioned, it's about eight to eleven of us right now. Yeah, that that's actually when you are driving into a bigger company. That's actually yes. quite a good number of uh, staff. So, what actually? Uh, what is the secret behind this team success? And you have been uh, going internationally with the brand. What is that? Uh, what is that tip you can give into the youth who is planning to, you know, start get a startup or you know, uh, build a brand? They always have to have that backbone. The team. Yeah. What do I you have to? Say, I would say don't have ego mindset in the team and don't have that unhealthy relationship like when you hold a title because if you have eight people i bet there's a manager in my company there's a ceo coo or anything right so when you have the title automatically sometimes without knowing uh, knowing or unknowingly you know like knowingly or unknowingly we will have that ego so i guess all of us have to find it out before it affects us and affects people around us so when we are assigned to have a title it's okay to have the responsibility, but not to carry it uh, with you all the time and make the environment, like working environment, toxic. So that's like something I, I don't encourage. And I don't do that. Regardless, I'm carrying a title of founder or CEO of the company. I feel like it's more of uh, being engaging. Yes, the decision making is under me, but I'm still okay to listen to my, my, my colleague or my managers there because I believe that my decision is not always right. So sometimes we think just because we hold a title, we are the right one. I don't think so. There are people without title who could be right. So I think we have to have that open ears to listen. And I, I would say that ego, ego, you should have true it away. Because if you have an ego, you have that dominant feeling uh, in any environment, regardless working or personal life, it will ruin entire thing. Because you are not in a, in a way that uh, open mind to listen to anybody. Because you feel like whatever I'm making a decision or something, it's right. Someone else is wrong. So that that's only happened when egos come. So I feel like we shouldn't have that. That's absolutely true. That is true. Uh, so Pravina, if I just take, uh, you know, the future is evolving with new technology like AI, you know, virtual reality, and uh, all these emerging technologies. So how, how have you blended these into virtual assistant Asia and personally, how do you see these, uh, you know, chat GPT and the new tech, how do you see them? I pretty interesting, but how do you, you personally use them and then link it to the brand? I, I do use all of these tools because uh, first thing is all making our work easier. So why not, right? It saves your time, energy and everything. But if you ask me, am I relying on that 100%? No, because uh, I always believe uh, person touch has to be there. Like most of us right now, in example, writing a content or something, even in LinkedIn, I bet you have seen people, uh, the moment you read, it's, you know, it's from ChatGPT. Especially if you're really a content writer, you're writing on daily basis. Some of the content easily, you can say, hey, this is not a human touch. This is purely a computer touch. So I, I'm, I, I, I wouldn't say that I won't uh, believe on chat GPT or machine learning. I'm not supporting. I'm supporting because even be- behind that work of the AI or machine learning, there's a human behind it. So end of the day, I always prefer or I would say that no matter however it's making you easier or something, put in your effort a little bit. 
like sometimes I can see some emails entirely copy. You just put it there. Okay, I need to send a follow up email. Sometimes you blindly you overlook. You don't. You forget to change the sometimes the greetings or something. It just mentioned in the bracket. Uh, put the company name and people overlook it and send it. So that is clearly shows that you're not putting your effort. In. You're not being uh, proactive and you're not really getting things seriously. You know. So we shouldn't take that AI granted. We have to see it as a tool. When you see it as a tool, it is okay. When you see it like hundred percent that is you, then it's wrong because you're totally forgetting that your touch is not there, and it it can backfire you in many ways. Especially when you're sending something to a big company as a partnership, it shows that how efficient you are. You know, it, Definitely, you have yeah. to learn in that way. So other yeah. than that, keep up with the new trends and everything. Learning, learning is very important. I think. We cannot stop learning because as branding strategies, running a company, uh, everything, and working with another company, I have to be keep up to up to the trends nowadays. Because every day, every week, or you know, sometimes tomorrow you wake up, some things is new features in some apps. So you have to go and learn it because when your client comes to you or encountering something, hey, I saw this feature. Do you know about it? You shouldn't be being puzzled that. So Absolutely. especially because my company is a corporate solution provider, you know. So being a solution provider, I should always be up to date with everything I have. I cannot wait until my client comes and says. Sometimes it happens, human error. Sometimes people will say, "Yeah, we overlooked it" or something. But when they come, we also must be ready to say, "Oh, really? I have overlooked it. Uh, let me get back to you on that." Instead of saying "Don't know," I think we should have the capability to say, "Let me check." That shows that we have an efficient to go check yeah. something. Uh, so I feel like learning is very important. Definitely. If I go back to. Uh... The brand virtual assistant Asia. If I could ask you like this, what are your top five features or the top five things that you say about virtual assistant to the world or to any a client? What do you say about it? In short, first, first is is breaking the stereotypical way of uh, working, which is uh, no more traditional method. One thing I know that COVID has taught us that. We don't have to be somewhere to work anymore. You can be anywhere in this world. You can get things done unless it's a technical job. Like if you're a if you're a site engineer, you have to go to site. But if you're someone that you know for a fact you can work with your computer, I don't think so. You have to be in an office or somewhere. You get my point, right? So yes, yeah. that's, that's the whole point of virtual assistant. Uh, that I feel like I can connect to anybody around the world. You can be in anywhere, Africa. You can be in India. You can be in Sri Lanka, I can connect to you. I can work for you. So because there's no barrier for us, that's one thing that my company is also dealing on that basis. So my clientele is in Europe, US, Australia, uh, Africa as well. So I feel like it works. And most of my good friends and well wishes that I met is in this networking way. You know, like even though they are in India or somewhere, all of this is happening this way. So this is how it happens. And another second thing I would say that is a cost saving. Because inflations happen, like you never know when you will be affected by that, right? So yeah. it happens. Everybody, uh, thinking, am I going to have my job or no? Are they going to retrench me or not? That kind of worry is that. So in my company, we plan the, the 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 way I'm saying that I'm a solution provider is because first is we don't have, uh, taxations or you don't have to give benefits when we work with you. We are not your full timer workers. Because when when you see my website, there are thirteen services I'm providing. So you can ask me how uh, this gonna make things solid, you know, give solutions or something. So if you're hiring a per head working for you, probably you're paying at a full timer with a two years degree experience or something, uh, maybe thousand USD. Let's put it in that way. So this thousand USD is their salary, but as a as a company, you also will pay some tax for them and working uh, benefits and everything, right? So plus minus, there's additional charge, probably thousand three hundred USD. Probably you're paying for the salary, right? So what I'm saying, when you come to us, you are not paying benefits, you are not paying extra tax for us, and from that thousand USD, we will save another thirty percent. That means it's probably seven hundred USD. You can get all the job done. You get my Cost point. Saving. So yeah, that, saving for you. Uh, third thing is, I feel like um, the thing that comes in my mind is next generation kind of jobs because being a student. Why did you start this? Because you know for a fact you want to build your brand. You want to go into entrepreneurships and everything. You don't want this nine to five, you know, rat yeah, race. Yeah. I believe my company 
is also helping people in the nature because a lot of startups is coming, a lot of entrepreneurs is coming. They, they are all, not everybody's financially stable to have a full time or to work. So we are actually helping them in a way. You know what? I'm your external link. I can sort this out for you. So that's yeah. how I'm seeing. This. Amazing. If I just add in a sub question, I don't know how uh, correct this question is, but if I ask you. Uh, what is the future of uh, virtual assistant Asia? Where do you see it? Like how, what is that, what is that dream goal you wanted to reach to? Do you have anything like that? Ideally, I wanted to support most of the people, like especially growing uh, business holders, small business holders that not to worry to have certain people because sometimes they are like too, too much into business. They are like, I'm not afford to have someone to do this, so perhaps I, I'm doing it. So they don't have work-life balance. So what I'm saying is we can give a good work-life balance to people. And if you ask me growth-wise, as I'm doing training and coaching my company is providing, we definitely want to go well-known in that way. We need to say we want to be the stop of corporate solution as well as guiding people how to build brand. Because apart from a company, I'm known for building brands. Like you, yeah, if yeah. You know, so I build corporate brands and personal branding. So I'm a coach for that and trainer for that as well. So I want to give this uh, experience to people that start branding first, start your LinkedIn first, because many people has no idea how what is LinkedIn, because it's very common. Everybody will like, LinkedIn is a job board. I don't, if you see that as a job board, you don't see the group. Because LinkedIn is beyond than that. So me, I'm not attack, attached with LinkedIn, but personally, I have benefited. So I'm, I'm bringing this to my society. Like my, in my country, is something that not many people in universities are known about it, or schools are known about it. So I'm actually bringing in and giving awareness talk to them. And if there's an option for me to even come globally, go to another country and educate them, give awareness talk, I'm happy to do that. It, it's a good cause, I think. We should do that because many people are not having this idea. So I, I would like to spread it more. Absolutely. So that's, that's goal for virtual assistant Asia. I want my company to be known that we are adding value to the societies in a way of sharing these two golden nuggets that we have right now. That uh, from my company basis and also the branding basis. Amazing. So the reason I asked that uh, question, Pravina, is that uh, many youth uh, in in Sri Lanka, it's that uh, many youth are struggling, you know, to build, you know, to build their own brand, you know. When they start from school days, uh, maybe uh, if I if you if you don't know about the education system here, that they are taught on entrepreneurship, it's not introduced here yet. So they struggle, you know, to learn. When they pass out on O levels, A levels, they are really on that spot. To they are like very framed up to a certain limit where they say doctors, engineers, and you know the basic uh, the general uh, fields that we always see. I call it generation. Yes. Like we all yes. are into the trap. Exactly, exactly. So the reason I asked that question is that uh, when we spoke from earlier, f like from the top to bottom right now, uh, you have proved it like from, you know, from being like from the school days and you have proved it, you know, up to now the company that you have built it so far. So what is that? What is that uh, secret recipe or the tip that you have to tell for how they can create their own personal brand or, you know, step outside that comfort frame and do some, do take a risk. Many people, yeah, I think I'm right, they are very scared to take risks. They are really scared to step out of that comfort zone. I get it. Okay. Um, I would start for myself. When I first get into branding work, which is I started my branding in LinkedIn because branding is not purely for LinkedIn. I just want to specify that. Uh, branding is for all the social media. If you're a vlogger, I think, YouTube is a black platform for you to do that. If you are someone in creative creative world, like probably dancer, a singer, or something, definitely TikTok or Instagram or YouTube Shorts are a very good platform for you. In my case, I I decided a corporate. Work. To be honest, I wanted to be a doctor, so it couldn't happen. <laughs> so I diverted. I mean, you can tell me, you know. I, I mean, I grew up in that realm, you know, that kind of environment and family, so. When I grew up, I thought I also wanted to be a doctor. That's and the exact some, same thing I mentioned. That's the exact that. same. Yeah, yeah. So some things happened and it diverted into, like I couldn't pursue a doctor and I did my degree in teaching. By the way, I'm a certified teacher. So 
teaching and then by the time I finished my uh, degree, graduations and everything, COVID started. Oh. No way for me to get the postings. And I didn't want to be a teacher as well. I was not ready for that. I was like, without choice, I was doing it out of, you know, I don't want, I, my doctor dream didn't happen. And I have, was diverted into this. And then I was like, okay, I couldn't do this. I mean, I, I was doing the degree just for the sake of getting the certificate. That's it. I know for a fact I'm not going to be a teacher. And then COVID happened. It helps me. Uh, many people complain COVID. Yes, financially it affected many people. But it also makes me, uh, uh, COVID helps me to find who I am. That's where all these freelance jobs started, virtual assistants started. I get to explore. So if you see my degree and everything, it is in teaching. But if you see my experience, I have worked as market researcher, data analyst, data research, and I have been social media manager. People are actually doing degrees to get these particular job roles. And I did all these jobs without that degree. I think that is because the interest I have. Second thing is I started my work, how to say my branding in the right platform to attract certain recruiters to come back to me on this way. So my first post or very primary uh, stage for LinkedIn, I wrote movie reviews and uh, series reviews. Like COVID, you know, you watch your Netflix and everything. So I was watching it and, and then for a fact, I was in a language background. My mom was actually helped me. She said, I know you are not going to go to school or something and COVID happens. Maybe you do something with this. You keep on watching because I, I was managed to watch about if if it's series, I managed to finish the whole thing on the day itself. You and if it's movie, it. Yeah, you know that. And then if it's movie, I can go three, four movies because we got nothing to watch. 24 hours, what are you going to do in the house? We can't go out, nothing. So that's what happening. So what I did, okay, yeah, what she said was right. So I tried to write the thing. So I was the weirdest one in LinkedIn to write the review set. And somehow, people who valued my language skills or writing skills, they reached me out and I said, hey, I have a job for you. But it is not a movie writing, but it is a content <laughs> writing. Since you have a yeah. language, I bet you can dive into anything. Yes, that's for sure. It just, yeah. you need to understand the industry you're writing about. You have to do a little bit of research. That's how it started. Research, research is started there. Uh, then slowly a data analysing job came. I said, I'm not certified for this. And they said, we have a trainer to train you. And the job is six months long. So I would say that this is how it all started. And then from that, uh, I, I was a girl that known in LinkedIn, whoever that is connection with me right now, the earlier stage connections knows that I'm a girl, no face in LinkedIn, a girl that has no face. Like literally you only can see me in the cover, uh, I mean the, the profile, picture. profile picture, that to a selfie. Imagine how not professional. Now you go see my profile, you'll be thinking this is so different than before. So that's how my profile was. And a very basic uh, uh, cover image with Canva. So when I started from that, a girl that I have no confidence to show my face. I'm an introvert. I also feel like, am I going to be judged for the way I look? And I, because LinkedIn was so culturized with white people, if you really True. say that. Yeah. In a very initial stage, because it wasn't exposed to us. Because we all have a different mentality that it was mainly about that oh, it is just a job board, only CEOs can give it. That's a myth, actually. People believe that higher uh, position people only will be in LinkedIn. It's a myth. And it's, oh, it's for the recruiters. It's for the people who are looking for a job. It's for a C-suit level. But actually, it's for everybody. That is my goal, which I'm saying that I'm spreading to all the universities and schools locally here that a LinkedIn age to get into it is 16 years old. So in my country, you are finish your high school at 17. But 16 years old, I think US and India, most of the countries, are, high schools are at 16 is the last. After that, 17, they're getting into universities, you know, or college. Yeah. So basically, that schools or the education industries are uh, explaining to them that six, the age is 16. So when you're in the high school final year, download the app, getting into it, whatever certification, whatever achievement you have done along the years in the schools, upload them. Because there, there's an interview to get a placement in college, in abroad. So usually, you will have interviews to get into certain universities yeah, and everything. Yeah, so every, yeah. every country has a different way. Like my, my country, you just have to apply. They will see your exam results and everything. But there, they will see, of course, uh, the amount of effort you put in a high school, probably you're, you're a 
you're a sports guy or you could be in your know, creative uh, uh, bodies in your schools or something it's adding value to you and when you go to the university eventually yeah. that added cred- credits will make you feel like uh, be in a in a, in a head of a creative department head of sports or for something maybe running or football or something you know so all of this they started from the branding that you do it second thing is when you start that you're exposed to networking world or corporate world very easily so you're ba- breaking that fear and everything at an early age of course it's a struggle but imagine your your life after five years probably you're, when you're in your 20s you'll be more confident you'll be more tuned you'll be more uh, precise on what you're doing because you've been exposed to the people from the early age and when you doing this personal branding that's called personal branding sometimes you can do your branding anywhere you like it i chose corporate because i want to connect and that too when i started i was in my 20s already because this wasn't exposed to me in university if if there's someone come and say this particular thing that i'm sharing right now when i was in university probably i would have been two times better right now in linkedin probably in my branding might be more strong because i was exposed early yeah and and linkedin is the only platform that i personally feel like you can connect to people all the decision makers in the world so imagine uh, rasal probably you join when you are early stage everything you do i'm as a ceo i'm seeing your work everything right so by the time you graduate probably you're dropping a post or i'm seeing that you graduated you post and everything you're looking for a job or something mention i will be be like hey rasal probably let's go for an interview because i've been seeing your efforts there and i know that you can add value to me so this way many decision makers probably not texting you at the moment when you doing something but they will always watch yeah definitely so that's what I'm and in this world that to get a, a job or to be even interviewed is very hard imagine you're getting it from a decision maker a direct dm probably you're dropping a post that is saying hey i just finished my degree and then i'm looking for a job anybody could you know tell me this is my background you're writing a post on linkedin I I believe that there will be hundreds of people coming in life and then put that DM me or email me this is my email address something like that. I bet you have seen posts like that many people looking for yeah, they just yeah. why it's yeah. happens because they put that self out properly. Yeah. And another thing when you start your brandings and everything you will eventually uh, I wouldn't say that you will become extrovert it's just that you know how to shift your 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 way like yeah. you, you can be extrovert for the two hours and then you can go back to your shell when i i talk to people go networking of course i have to talk what's the whole point you're doing networking but we can't talk so you can't give a reason i'm a i'm an introvert i can't do that there are yeah. a lot of introvert leaders leaders are not always extrovert leaders can i personally i feel like introvert and extrovert got nothing to do with leadership got nothing to do with being an owner or business owner you can't tell all the business owner all the well known people are extrovert no it's just their choice if i can, this is my right now this is my responsibility to talk to you because you requested me so if once this one hour session is finished i'm going back to my shop that is myself i can't be talking to so much to people or something because it's is my way of being but i can't come and tell when you give me invitation and it's adding value to both of us i can't say oh sorry rasal i can't do it i'm an introvert introvert can never be a reason for stopping you to do something because many people when it comes to branding when we say that post it on linkedin or post it on instagram they will say oh i'm very shy of of course we all have camera shy but i feel like that's always the first step if there's no first step there's no way you can do anything so that's how it started i felt from no face girl to a girl that now you open your linkedin i think almost every week four five times you can see my face there Definitely. so i I've, i've been seeing it a couple of days every week you know about that so it's a, it's a drastic change so yeah 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 that's actually an amazing answer i think what we can uh, tell the youth is that get the linkedin sorted out soon as yeah, you are some people they will like coming to me especially the coaching session this is what they will come especially i'm not getting students you know sometimes i get people that they are in their 25 26 or in final year students they be like i want to go to corporate but i i don't know how to face that thing because they'll have the fear oh is it a multinational company uh, am i going to be you know this is that that you know that kind of guidance and how to portray themselves so this kind of coaching is the one they coming to me yeah. and i feel like uh, i can relate to them more because one is my age is not that far from them I, i'm also in my late 20s so the connectivity is there probably if i'm in 30s or 50s they have different 
perception. They'd be like, she's already old enough, so probably she has that experience. Actually, I feel like it's it's not about, if you ask me, I've never worked with corporates. I have no corporate experience. But if you ask me, I learned all of this from LinkedIn. Because from the corporate people that I've connected with, the way they post, the way they carry themselves, the way they are. So it makes me uh, learn more. Because it's authenticity end of the day. So I feel like I learn a lot from that. Way. That's per- that's a perfect answer that I wanted as always. And also this uh, value of LinkedIn, we really spoke about it in that uh, answer. So uh, we are actually clocking on time or so. I just wanted to know uh, the journey so far that you have gone until now, until all this, uh, you know, you have uh, spoken at events, you know, coached people, brands, uh, handling your own team, you know, owning up this, uh, the virtual assistant Asia. So all this, how do you, how do you manage your time? How do you manage your stress? How do you handle all this? It's just, I'm just shocked. <laughs> It's definitely not an easy ride. It's a roller coaster ride. Because uh, first is my company is not based on one region. It's global. So like today, I might be in Malaysia time. Tomorrow, I might be in the US time. The next day, I might be have to work in the UK time due to my client calls or client meetings or uh, virtual networking sessions or something. So if you ask me time-wise, uh, it's pretty hectic. But it's a good right because as a startup now, I feel like uh, when I graduated, like I said, 23, right? So two years in COVID has gone. So I have lost two years of my working life there. So I have to chase a lot right now, even though I'm so I'm okay to grind. I, I'm enjoying my grind. I have no complaints about it. Of course, here there's a human, we fall sick, we feel stressed, depressed and everything. But I always take a break. There are days that from LinkedIn, you can see a week or five days straight i won't post because we are a human you're not tuned in a way that every day it's, it's you know it's still a consistency and persistent but you don't have to overdo definitely Sometimes, yeah. because even though i'm seeing i have to post every day and everything if you have a discipline you always can schedule the post if you're not up to that it's okay it's i feel like it's okay because there are many my clients will say i'm i'm not really uh, free today to give you contents and everything to post uh, in, let me work over the night. I say it's okay. If if let's say your posting time or your working time on LinkedIn is on Tuesday, you will post regularly. If that one week you can't make it, it's fine. You can post it on Wednesdays. So sometimes we're always in the clock. We're always running off the clock. Yeah, for funding. yeah. I have to do this. I have to do. I, we don't have to do the racing thing. And I feel like this is something I recently watched a video in an interview. I like that particular part. We shouldn't see anybody or any situation like a winning or losing. Because when you see winning and losing, competition comes in. When competition comes in, it's very unhealthy. Because if you win, another person is losing. Definitely, right? yeah. If they win, you are losing. So you have that fear, that kind of thing. Instead of that, live your life. When you live your life, you just do what you got to do. You fail or not fail, it's not going to affect anybody else. It's just for you to move forward. Like same thing, if like let's say... I have a competition to do a posting with you today. Like, let's say you are very active on LinkedIn. I'm thinking, oh, Russell is posting today. I have to do it today. Let's say I'm never doing it today. I, I'd be like, oh, Russell win. Russell has more followers. Russell has more likes. I shouldn't have that. Yeah. That's very unhealthy. So that's competition. So when you see win and losing, you it's, a, it's purely a competition there. Right? Because if you're winning, another person is losing. That's, that's purely, that's a game. So instead of that, start leave that way. You do what you got to do and things will flow. So this is something I watch and I feel like I'm adapting that nowadays. So I feel like I don't want to see it as a competition because I was once that person that I have to win. I have to win. I have to have this, that, you know, that kind of thing. But I feel like, no, I think it's okay to live the life as it is. And when you put in effort, you put in everything, it will unfold in many other ways. You will get a lot of Some amazing words just what i wanted to hear from you and uh, with that i think uh, we have to just uh, end our chat it's clocking out on time so it's been a really pleasure talking to you uh, pravina it's been so inspiring so amazing it's been such a huge journey that you have had so far from zero to 100 and virtual assistant asia it's just simply amazing i've been following you for some time now on linkedin and 
really amazing great stuff and wishing you all the best for the future and what do you have to say finally on the podcast and your experience so far on this oh, podcast Rasa, i have to talk about this i didn't know you're a student so i would say i want to take this opportunity whoever get to watch this uh, if if they are a student or something i feel like you're a right uh, example here so starting something in your final year or right now into your career or something this going to help you a lot in the long run you know why because you have exposed to a lot of corporate people right now the fear you had like shy you are introvert uh, camera shy everything you're breaking i bet now with all of us uh, in this camera setting i think one day i i wouldn't be surprised i'm seeing a big uh, russell's poster studio or something i'll be the first one to be very happy for you because the growth you know that growth so i think all of us this is my final word i don't have anything personal to share i feel like everybody has to start branding is not just for a company it's just not for someone in a, some levels or some titles branding for everybody from students to a ceo branding is very important So I feel like everybody has to step into it. Everybody has to explore themselves and stop being in that that shell. If you're in that twenty people, you're in that particular uh, area or particular school, particular university. You just revolve in that ten people only. When you go into this kind of platforms, you you get people uh, from global way, millions of people. Your thought process on what you, whatever you're doing is expanding. So I feel like that's my final word. Keep learning, expand, and do branding. Mm-hmm. And something I love is inspire. Be an inspirational person to everybody around you. That means you have to do a very right thing. It's a very big responsibility being inspiration. And keep being inspired. Whoever you see, you you saw them, and then you feel like oh they are inspiring. And go and greet them. Say hey, you're doing a good job. I mean that simple word can drive that another person to move longer. In the hour, whatever. <laughs> And so I think, like when you do that, you get that. I, it's always starts yeah. with us. Never That's expect true. people has to come to you. You go to. I mean, it's okay. We do. It's okay for us to go first. We don't yeah. have to wait for people to come and always uh, praise us or something, right? So that, that's that's all for me. I'm pretty sure, uh, Pravina. There will be many people wanting to connect with you. You know, reach out to you from across the globe and from Sri Lanka as well. Let's just say, uh, are they okay with connecting to you on LinkedIn? And I'm, I'm thinking it's perfectly course, alright. I mean, he will add all the links or something related to me. Yes. Please do that. So I just will drop like, that as well. And yeah, then uh, there, there are some of my viewers are corporate viewers as well. So if they want to connect with Virtual Assistant Asia, so, the link is there as well. It's been a pleasure, really. Like I told, thank you very much with your busy schedule and different time zones and shifting out. Let's just uh, reach out soon, and uh, yeah, if sure. there is any any chat that I want to have, any workshop that I want to conduct online to the youth, I'll just reach out to you again. Thank you so uh, much. Pleasure for me too. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.